All right, we've been working on solving equations, um, but there are things other than just equations out there. So um, now we need to take what we've learned and we need to go a step further and we need to learn how to solve inequalities. Now, before we actually start learning how to solve them, let's go back and try and remember what an inequality actually means. So what does it mean for a number to be larger than three? Well, things like four would be larger than three, and five would be larger than three, and even three and a half is larger than three. There are a whole bunch of things that are larger than three. Actually, they would start not including the three and go all the way to the right, because if you'll remember, things to the right are larger, things to the left are smaller, but we would not include the three itself because three is not larger than three. But three point zero 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 one is larger than three. So it would be everything just to the right of three and on then to the end of the number line. Okay, so we can see by looking at this example that there are a lot of numbers that make an inequality actually a true statement. And whenever we talk about our inequalities, we need to talk about our symbols. There are some very specific symbols that we use for inequalities. So let's review what those mean before we go any further. What about this symbol that's pointing to the left? Well, if you remember, that means less than. And the symbol that is pointing towards the right means greater than. Now, in the past, um, you have probably not focused necessarily on the words, but you've just looked at it as it's pointing at the smaller number. Or um, I've heard from students before, the alligator eats the larger number. But I re you really need to start paying attention to the actual vocabulary because that's going to be extremely important as we move further in the mathematics. Okay, so if we have our less than symbol here, what does it mean when it has a bar underneath it or a line underneath it? Well, if you'll remember, this means less than or equal to. It could be either one of those and be a true statement. And if you'll remember also, this symbol here means greater than or equal to. So now, by looking at those, we can see that there is an absolute difference between these two symbols. One is uh, greater than, the other is greater than or equal to. So there has to be a way of showing that is different whenever we actually graph or when we draw out its picture. So let's say we have this first statement here. X is greater than three. Well, that's what we did a while ago when we said just to the right of three, everything then to the right of that, those numbers would be greater than three. But we can't include the three itself, uh, include it. Sorry about that. Because three is not larger than three. So it doesn't work in that statement there. But in this statement, x is greater than or equal to three, it does work because three is greater than or equal to three. So we would have everything to the right of that, including the three itself. Well, when we go to show that on a number line, we use parentheses and brackets. Used to, we used an open circle for not included and a closed circle if it was included. But now, we're going to move up just a step from that. And if the endpoint is not included, we use a parenthesis. If the endpoint is included, we use a bracket. So this is extremely important that you understand the difference between these two. We're going to be using this parenthesis and bracket notation all the way through college algebra.